Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's a new week and it's like the first full official week of the season being over, isn't it? Of course, every domestic competition has now concluded. It's the summer holidays and uh, aye, it's a, a fun time to be a Celtic fan, isn't it? So boring. <laughs> Nah, in all seriousness, it's not that boring. Over the past 24 hours, it's actually been quite an exciting time to be a Celtic fan, and we've been kind of gifted with news left, right, and centre. There's a lot to talk about today, and um, it's hard to narrow it down to, to actually one topic. Of course, my style of video is usually we go over the one overwhelmingly big topic of the day, and we kind of break it all down and talk about it, but there's like a lot of little stories to kind of touch on today, which is weird to kind of kickstart the week. I actually had a plan to do a kind of top 10 sort of video this week and uh, I'm going to delay that for now and you'll see what that is if I get round to it. But we're here um, and let's kind of quick fire through all the news for today then I suppose because as I said there's a lot to speak about. One thing involving kits as well which obviously excites me because you know me, I love kits. Um, so yeah, a lot to talk about. Wow. Let's, let's just not waste a lot of time today, yeah? And before we go any further with the video, you know what to do. Make sure to go down below, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Over the weekend there, we hit 34,000 subscribers. We've done it, which means the next step is get towards 35,000 subscribers. We are halfway there almost to that 40k landmark. So if you could, if you haven't already, go down below, hit like, hit subscribe. It's absolutely free for a summer worth of free content. Um, we'll be back with the podcast, hopefully soon this week as well. I'm sorry I took the weekend off. I celebrated the 34k in style, you could say. Um, but yeah, right, okay, let's stop talking nonsense. Let's talk about Selic. So the first story of today, Jota has practically signed for Celtic. Practically confirmed was the words used in the tabloids this weekend. The news broke sort of last night that it looks to be almost done. And it's a kind of tiresome story at this point because I feel like that's the constant update we've had for, you know, two, three months. It's been, oh, Jota will most likely go to Celtic. Celtic have made contact. Jota wants to go to Celtic, blah, blah, blah. It's just been a repetition of the same sort of article, but practically confirmed is the words that are being used, which is fantastic news. Um, as we all know, Jota, a player we desperately want to see stay at Celtic. And I say repetitive because I just feel like I'm repeating the same things when it comes to Jota. And that's why I didn't want to make a video dedicated to this topic alone, because what else is there to say apart from he's a fantastic player, he's one of the most talented I've ever seen at Celtic, and Celtic should do everything they can in their power to sign the player. It's the same things I've been saying since the moment he made his debut, basically, <laughs> we knew he was the real deal, we knew we wanted to see him permanently stay at Celtic, so there's nothing new on that front, just a little bit of an update to the news story itself. So the Portuguese uh, publication, Abola, I think that's the pronunciation, have uh, came out with another article, they have been providing updates along the way, which gave us a brief update on the Jota situation, so let's have a little look into that, here's a rough translation of what Abola had to say. The Benfica player Jota, who represented Celtic on loan from the Eagles this season, is practically confirmed in the Glasgow team that will have exercised the 7.5 million euros option. Um, there is a new target on the way for the Catholics. The English newspaper Daily Mail reports that Celtic are interested in signing left-back Francisco Ortega, 23, from Vélez Sarsfield, with a contract until December 2024, valued at 4.2 million euros. So, inside that article alone, uh, with the news update on Jota, they have provided, the, provided news on another target that Celtic are apparently looking at. We're going to dive into that one a bit more during the week when more comes out on it, if there's any more truth to it, but the main chunk of the story is practically confirmed. Hopefully there's a lot of truth to that and hopefully we see Jota being announced as a Celtic player in the coming weeks. Um, they're talking about a deal being wrapped up in the coming days, so as soon as possible Celtic, that would be nice. It'd be a lovely way to kickstart what is another massive transfer window for Celtic. Also, can we very quickly acknowledge that they referred to Celtic as the Catholics? Um, in the actual Portuguese article itself, it does call us dos Catolicos, which I believe is the Catholics, so it's not a Google translation error. Um, I love that. Uh, why The Daily Record should start referring to us as the Catholics. 
The second piece of news is also transfer related news, Dyson Maida is officially a Celtic player, it was confirmed this morning by Yokohama F Marinos, Celtic haven't released anything as of recording to um, back up the confirmation but I mean we all know that Dyson Maida was going to become a Celtic player anyway and that's one thing I'm glad about that this has actually just been said and it's came out with, the amount of people who didn't grasp what a mandatory future transfer was, the word mandatory that says it all, it was going to happen, this is not breaking news, this is not a surprise, Dyson Maida was always going to sign for Celtic, whether you liked it or not, and I think most people are going to be very, very happy with that, there was a point in time when he first signed that a lot of people were like, oh, we shouldn't have signed him personally, no chance, no way, no way do we sign him personally, um, but he's here, good, and he's, he's warmed a, a lot of the support after what was a little bit of a rough start for him, but a brilliant player, and I'm glad that he is now through the door permanently, and next next season hopefully just keeps going with the improvement that we've seen of him as time went on here at Celtic, but the statement was released by his Japanese side this morning, this is what they had to say on Twitter, it has been decided that Dyson Maeda, who has been transferred to Celtic FC for a limited time, will be fully transferred to Celtic Football Club, uh, he said, Mar Marinos is one of my favourite football clubs forever and they had a full statement released on the club website as well. He will be back in Japan this week I believe to give a sort of farewell to his former club before he moves over to Scotland permanently. Um, very happy that it's all done and dusted as I said it's not huge news but that's it sort of official now that he is a, a full on permanent Celtic player. Um, as I said, next season, roll it on for him because I think he could be massive next year. Really good end to the season for Dyson Maida. Uh, I can't remember the exact figure we were talking about. So I think it was something maybe like one, one and a half million pounds. Um, I, yeah, buzzing. Um, thank you, Yokohama F. Marinos, for the, the loan deal to the end of the season. And now thank you for the player himself. He's, he's, a, he's a talent, a really special talent. And he's rapid. One of the biggest stories today actually, Ange Postacoglu speaking on the Champions League and of course a better picture of how the Champions League will look next season has now been formed. Uh, a lot of comments coming out today in relation to our, our stint in there next year, I'm looking forward to it. We touched on it last week a little bit but there has been more comment and interviews today from himself and players at the club in relation to our participation in the competition next season which I'm extremely excited for um but yeah you know it was good to hear Ange's comments on it he, he was he was quite funny in what he was saying he was speaking about our approach heading into the competition and how we'll treat it next year and how it's no different from any other game and Joe Hart was on the same interview with with Stan Sport and he gave his comments on on how excited he is and how we'll go for it and how we'll look at it as every other game uh, and that's good. Um, look, Celtic in the Champions League in recent times, of course, hasn't been great. Celtic in Europe hasn't really been great altogether. But to be back in the Premier competition, to challenge ourselves with the best of the best and to play against teams who are going to make us ultimately better um, is where we need to be. Um, and and Postacoglu's comments on it are very interesting because he was asked about his style. He was asked, will he sacrifice anything? And we all knew what the answer would be. We, we, we touched on it last week on this channel. We all said that and I said in, on my video that going into the competition next year, Postacoglu will do exactly what he's done in, in Europe this season and what he's done in every game this season. And that's go into the game with his philosophy. Go in and attack the game. Go in and try and do something. There's going to be no reservations from our manager when we head into these games. And a lot of people might look at that as a sort of naive approach and we're asking to get a doing. Look, he'll make changes that he has to make and I'm sure that our defence will be up to the task. But we're going to see a Celtic side who really want to go and beat these teams, who want to attack these teams and are not going to sacrifice the, their philosophy in doing so. And I'm excited for that. Um, yes, it might mean that we suffer a, a blow here and there defensively we might not look the greatest but you know if we want to beat these teams you've got to give them a good go at it Celtic have never been a, a, a good counter-attacking side we had that that game against Barcelona where we took our two chances and we ran away with the win it was magical it was like a one-off sort of out-of-body experience um but in general, you know, Celtic need to go for it. They need to try and take on these teams because sitting on the back foot never works for us. Uh, and Postacoglu touched on that today. Here's what he had to say when, when asked about his style and playing in European football. 
He said, I've never owned a bus, mate. I'm sure there'll be, as I've been my whole career, people telling me I need to adjust my approach and temper my aggression and all of those kind of things. I've done pretty well just sticking to it, to be fair, so I'll just keep going. And it's, that, that's it. That's exactly what I expected to hear from the manager when I listened to that little clip today when I passed it on Twitter. If you haven't seen it, go and check out Stan Sport. Brilliant um, piece of uh, journalism. Um, but, you know, you know, when you see that, um, and I wasn't shocked us at the manager and I was like, it gets me, gets me excited for what could be our Champions League run next season. I know that it might end up in, in tears for a lot of us <laughs> if we're playing PSG and we're, we're trying to attack the game. But, you know, this is a manager I believe in and I think there was real positive signs in Europe this year. I know we got that tanking once off of, of Leverkusen at Celtic Park when we were still sort of figuring it out. But I think that, you know, moving on beyond that, there was a lot of really positive signs. So, yeah, I'm excited. Um, and, and I don't want him to sacrifice his style. I want us to be trying to try be one of the most entertaining sides in Europe. I want us to cause surprises. So we'll wait and see how that goes. Um, and, and this is one thing that I considered, you know. When we played the likes of Leverkusen away, Betis away, um, and, and we had the opportunities to kind of win the games, you know, we could have done a lot better, we lost by one goal on, on both of those occasions, we were really thin on the ground when it came to depth and when we got late on to the game, you know, we got late on in Leverkusen, we didn't have really inspiring options coming off the bench for us, we were looking tired, Leverkusen were starting to really turn the tide of the game, but then in January we went to sign Maida, we went to sign Hatati, Jacques was basically like a January signing, we signed O'Reilly, we had all these different players, we added depth to our squad, and we're going to continue adding depth to our squad. Now, the positive signs were there at that point when we were struggling for options. Now we've got them. So I'm excited to see how that fares when we play in Europe next year. Um, Yeah, very fun prospect, and I'm just going to take it with both hands, I'd imagine. And on that note, with the domestic seasons finishing up basically all around Europe, the pots for the Champions League are filling out rather nicely. We've got a much better idea than what we did last week as to who will be in what pot. On screen, I will put the situations now. There is two separate scenarios in terms of where we know certain clubs will be. If Real Madrid win the Champions League, Liverpool will not make pot one. They will stay in pot two with Ajax heading into pot one. But if Liverpool win the Champions League, of course, they get that pot one place which they missed out on with Man City winning the Premier League and that means Ajax would be pot two so that's basically how it's looking just now on screen there's a lot of teams who have still yet to definitely absolutely qualify but there you go that's realistically how it could look next year um, in the Champions League group stages if all said teams were to qualify uh, it gives us a much better idea of the realistic groups we could face Pots 1, 2 and 3 are basically de determined with the exception of Benfica who still need to qualify for the competition. So we basically know our best case and worst case scenarios at this point which we'll discuss at a future date. Oh, a lot to talk about today. Moussa Dembele, my favourite, my king, my hero, his shirt will be back up in the background soon, don't you worry. Um, we could be getting more money. Uh, his contract is coming near an end at Lyon, he's only got a year left on the deal, so they're at a point where they either stick or twist with the player. Um, if he does leave this summer, if he does move anywhere for whatever fee, Celtic will be due 15% of any sell-on value, which means Celtic could have a couple thousand pounds extra in the bank you know you're hoping for millions but we'll have to see what happens because the transfer fee may not be that high with him only having a year left on his deal he's been linked with numerous premier league clubs in the past we've seen him linked with manchester united i think west ham we're looking at him at a point he's been linked with moves all over the place let's just go back for him let's let's bring him home let's fuck the sell on value let's just go and spend all the money on him uh, it'll be interesting to see he's had a fantastic um 2022 so far it was brilliant in the second half of the season for Leon, showing his true qualities once more the Dembele dollars shining through um and hopefully he does get a decent move for the for the best of his career he's someone who is one of my favorites in world football um, you know how much I love him if you've been on this channel the entirety of its existence. But yeah, Celtic could be in for more money with that. 
And finally, the last thing in today's video, the kits have been leaked. It's the most wonderful time of the year, kit leak season. I love it, um, not just with Celtic, with everybody. I just love seeing all the kits come through as an avid football kit fan. Um, but Celtic's kits are on screen now, home and away leaks so far. It might be actually the third top not being confirmed whether or not that black and green number will be the away or the third shirt. I have a feeling it might actually be the third shirt. Um, but yeah, there they are both on screen. The, the, the black one is a thing of sheer beauty. I absolutely love it. Gorgeous. Adidas giving us what I think will be their best effort yet. I think that is their best one. Um, the home one, I'm, I'm not too sure on yet. I need to see more photos. I need to see if the sponsor modelled on players. And then I'll make more of an opinion. I like that we're having a design through the hoops by the looks of it. Through the green, there seems to be a pattern. Which I've been wanting for a few years now. Um, don't think we've really had that since... You know, I remember the gradient of 16-17. I would like us to have a pattern or something through the, the hoops, and it looks as though we're going to get that. So we'll wait and see what more images emerge for that. But there you go. That's the two kits. Let me know what you think in the comments below. <sighs> okay. That is us. We are there. Finito. Thank God. I'm not even going to give you the proper outro. I'm just going to say bye. See you next time. Like and subscribe.